Thanks very much for joining. This is the first uh, online Bigger Speed Exchange session uh, that, uh, that we are, have organized. Uh, before we go into the meeting, I would just like to ask uh, uh, the group's chairman, Neil Packham Walsh, to, uh, to open the meeting. Neil? Thanks very much, Pierre. Um, yes, uh, Neil, I'm Neil Packham Walsh. I've been the chair of the D Groups Foundation Board since April. And um, welcome to everybody. Looking forward to this session very much. Um, D Groups. I'm, as I'm sure you all know, is a partnership of 18 development organisations. We hope that we will grow uh, further in the future and uh, we welcome new partners. Uh, we're committed to promote dialogue for development and in this session we'll be hearing from uh, two of the partners that are using dgroups about how they use dgroups and this will be the first hopefully of several sessions whereby different partners and users of dgroups will be able to share experience because there are, as we'll, as we'll learn today even, there are many ways in which groups can be used. So um, I'm looking forward very much to the presentations and to the discussion afterwards. Back to you, Pierre. Thank you. Thanks very much, Neil. Thanks very much. Uh, before we hear from the participants, uh, just a bit of housekeeping and house rules uh, to make sure that we have an effective online exchange. Um, so we'll go on for about uh, uh, 75 minutes tops, uh, so until 5.30 Central European time. I see that some other people are, are coming in. Um, I'm going to be facilitating uh, most of the conversation, but uh, in fact the idea is that uh, being this a peer exchange, the idea is that the participants themselves um, animate the meeting. We will have uh, food for thoughts from uh, two of our colleagues, and we hope to have uh, um, an interesting discussion afterwards. Um, I'm sure many of you are familiar with a program like the one we are using, or a similar one. Uh, just a bit of uh, uh, ground rules. So let's try to keep our microphone muted. And you see the mute button here on top of your tools bar. Um, so that we don't have a lot of background noise when uh, somebody is talking and presenting. So unless you're talking, please mute your mic. Uh, <clears throat> we have the chat, the chat functionality to send in questions. So while we will have, while we will have uh, uh, the presentation, you're welcome to drop in questions using the notes. Uh, our colleague Christine is monitoring the chat, and she will then bring the notes in, bring the question in for the discussions. Uh, with the note, please remember you can, you, you will see, you can send to the whole group or to individual participants. We encourage you to send to the whole groups when you have questions or, or comments so we can record without interrupting the presentation. Um, then for the, for the Q&A, I will ask you to please use the emoticons to uh, raise your hand when you would like to have the floor. You can also use your emoticons to indicate that you're not hearing or something else. Uh, is uh, um, you want to express some other feelings. But mainly, when we will have the Q&A, please be disciplined, raise your hand, uh, uh, and then we, we will have plenty of time for interactions. Um, last bit, uh, I'm recording, we're recording the meeting so that we can then use it for, for the playback. So I hope uh, everybody is, uh, is, okay, is okay with this. So what are we going to do today? This is the outline of the day. Uh, we have two short presentations, from, one from Sean from the Rural Water Supply Network and the other one from Myra from uh, FARA in Africa. They will tell us how they've been successfully used D-groups to uh, do the work more efficiently, probably. Um, like I said, the chats can be sent in as the presentation unfolds, but let's try not to, to interrupt unless there are technical reasons. Um, at the end of the two presentations, we'll, uh, we'll then have uh, enough time for Q&A and uh, what, we try, we, what we would like to, to have as a product is a series of uh, example cases and good practices of uh, how the group has been put to use effectively. Um, I, I'm already managing two different screens, so I don't have time to manage also the Twitter chat. But our colleague Epe is, is also keeping an eye on, on the chat, on the Twitter, so in case there are any 
question or comment that you also would like to share there, the hashtag is hdgroups2012. Uh, we, we're now going to hear from, from Sean from the Rural Water Supply Network. Sean, I'm ending presentation rights over to you so that you can flip directly through the slides. Um, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Sean, and I'm uh, based at SCAT in St. Gallen in Switzerland. And I very quickly want to uh, show you how uh, we use um, AD groups to it's really it's an integral part of our network um, and the, how we've adopted it over the last year. So for those of you who don't know uh, about uh, Rural Water Supply Network or RWSN, uh, we were set up 20 years ago as the hand pump technology network and very much behind um, the uh, the introduction of things like the, the, the India Mark II hand pump uh, and the, um, uh, the Afri Dev and things like that. So that's very much coming from a technical background and over, over the last 20 years it's, the remit's expanded and the membership is currently at around 2,500 members, 94 countries. So I've just checked on my G Group's page and we're up to 97 so we've got bagged another three countries uh, today so that's, that's good. Um, We've got four areas that that we're that we're interested in in the current strategy period. So we've got sustainable groundwater development, which is looking at issues around hand pump technology, around cost-effective boreholes, and around water resource management. We've got, got equity inclusion that's being managed by WaterAid, which is uh, looking at issues around human right to water and around disability access to uh, water facilities and to water point mapping. We have the management and support theme being managed by IRC in the Netherlands, which is looking at sustainable services. And then we have accelerating self-supply, which is looking at how to enable rural households to uh, improve their own water systems. In terms of who we are as a network, um, so we have a secretariat of uh, two and a half people here at SCAT and we have, you can see our main partners on our executive steering board which includes the African Development Bank, SDC, UNICEF, World Bank, Wardrade, WSP, IRC and, and SCAT. And then we have a range of active, uh, active members um, around the world and very much a mixture of national governments, private sector and, and NGOs and, and academics. So what did we choose D groups? D groups. Well, we um, we came on uh, this year, and uh, one of the reasons we did so is that we wanted a, a self-managing me membership database. We had a, a mailing list on a Excel spreadsheet, which was an absolute nightmare to, to maintain, um, and. Uh, we were looking at a way of a uh, mechanism of distributing our quarterly newsletter. But also we conducted an internal review of, of how we opted as, as a network and found that really there wasn't that much interaction between members uh, other than at some of the face-to-face -face events that we organise every uh, three or four years. And when we were looking at online platforms to do this, we, one of our main criteria was something that was accessible to those with limited or low bandwidth internet because clearly the people that we want to reach are those that in, in rural areas um, and those that uh, probably don't have uh, with the uh, broadband connections. So what does it do that, that and how do we use it? I mean, w over the last year we've had been using it for structured e-discussions. So our first one in April this year was on human right to water and sanitation. And that was in conjunction with the, um, Katerina de Albuquerque, who's the UN Special Rapporteur. And she was able to use the output from, from that e-discussion in, in her work with, with the UN. Uh, we've recently done uh, another e-discussion on on uh, cross-sector boreholes, which was a lot of drillers from, from about 30 different countries discussing um, how to professionalize the, the water oil drilling sector. And we're, we're currently in the process of a need discussion on accelerating self-supply. So it's, it's been a really effective tool at generating interest and generating, getting, synthesizing knowledge uh, within the network. 
We've also had some ad hoc discussions on things like water point mapping and mobile phone technology, which is very much a, a, um, a, a hot topic at the moment. But also another use that uh, has emerged is, is a sort of a technical query service where we've had people email in with uh, questions like, where can I get a certain valve part for an AFRIDEV in Ethiopia? Or um, I was out in the field and I came across this sort of hand pump, what on earth is it? And people have been, uh, members have been extremely helpful in providing detailed responses to those sorts of technical queries. And that really adds value to what we do as, as a network. Uh, in this slide is really showing where dgroups fits into our emerging sort of online ecosystem uh, that we've developed over the last year or so. So uh, we have uh, our main website, which is primarily a, a, a our sort of front door. Um, it's, it's our library. We've got about 300 documents there. We have uh, a, a WordPress blog where opinion pieces from members goes. We have a LinkedIn account, which is which ha does have some active discussions and is is a good way of getting people engaged. But we use both LinkedIn and Twitter as a way to raise the profile of the network and to get people from there to migrate to D groups and to be involved in those those discussions. So in terms of how we manage it, uh, it's managed here by the Secretariat, uh, but we also hand over moderation rights to our team coordinators as well. So, so we've got uh, some of our, our collaborators in, in WaterAid and the IRC, for example, who are moderating some of those, those groups. English is the dominant language, but as a network, we've pledged to become bilingual in English and French, um, but this is something that's that's quite challenging and uh, uh, both in terms of our main publications and, and uh, website but also how we run the network through dgroups. So very, very quickly really in terms of what we've learned over the last year, um, it's been very useful because members have opted into dgroups so we know that they're there and they're active whereas before when it was just a mailing list um, on Excel, we didn't know um, we didn't know whether people were there or not, and actually reading the, the materials uh, unless the email sort of bounced. The discussions have created some really tangible outputs and strengthened relationships be uh, between people in the network. Um, and our challenge now is really to uh, manage uh, and disseminate knowledge with uh, with active practitioners, and so we really want to get more people, um, district water officers, NGO practitioners, private sector in in uh, various countries in, in, into the network uh, through dgroups so that they can share and collaborate. So really our, our take, uh, the lesson that we've learned really is that thanks to dgroups, uh, the networking element has really been put into the rural water supply network and that's been the real added value for us is, is what it's enabled people to do to collaborate and to communicate with each other much more effectively. And finally, uh, my my question to the audience is is what we'd like to learn from your experiences, or one of the many things we'd like to learn, is how can we best make some of these interactions more multilingual? Uh, because while the majority of our membership is in, in Africa, we want to make sure that uh, the Francophone Africa and, and Anglophone Africa can properly interact. And then you have uh, obviously Latin America and, and, and areas like that. So we want to make it as inclusive as possible and would welcome your ideas how we can do that. So thank you very much. That was, I hope I didn't speak too quickly, but that was, um, but thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Sean. We will come back to the question you had for the other participants and the question that they may have for you uh, later on. But uh, uh, I think there are quite some interesting elements that have that have emerged from from your presentation. I would uh, encourage participants to to log uh, your question or comments in the chat uh, if you if you have some, so that we can then speed up uh, uh, when we open the floor for the for the discussion. Uh, 
Uh, Sean, I would like now to ask you to pass the presenter right over to Myra so she can go through her presentation. So what you should do basically is to right click on Myra's name and then select give presenter right. There we go. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Myra Robrand. I'm sharing with you our experiences on the group at uh, FARA. Uh, FARA is the Forum for Agricultural Research in Africa. And we are based in Accra, Ghana. And um, we are basically the technical arm of the African Union on Agricultural Research for Development. We have various um, members or constituencies from research, extension, education, and civil society organizations. Um, we cover the whole, um, well, we have memberships all over, over Africa, but we work very closely with sub-regional research organizations such as CORAF, ASAREKA, um, CARDESA, and NASO. Um, our, our interventions in Africa cover four areas, that is advocacy and policy, on agricultural research. The second one is improving access to knowledge and technology, uh, which one, which is what I'm heading. Yeah. The third is capacity strengthening um, for agricultural research in Africa. The fourth is partnership and strategic alliances. Okay, so if I go to the outline of my um, discussion, the main reason why we went into D group is that FARA as a forum has to reach out to its diverse members across the world or specifically in the continent. Um, this bridges the gap between our general assemblies that are held every three years. So we wanted to have a mechanism where our constituents can actually communicate with us and vice versa within this three years gap. Um, the second one is more on communicating, communication and management of platforms across the continent. We have different thematic platforms within each of our programs and these groups being used to um, manage these platforms. Um, the current status of our D group we have 228 members from 102 countries. The membership is so diverse because it involves or our membership it, uh, starts from farmer, farmer organizations, extension, youth, up to different leaders of uh, research institutions within Africa as well as international organizations and donor organizations. So the skills in managing or joining in the D group is very diverse. But the past few years we've been able to hopefully through experience been able to improve how each of our members are actually um, participating in the D group. And since D group is used in for diverse purposes in FARA, a very active platform that we have is PayPart, which is being managed by um, Francois. Um, we also have another one, Africa Adapt, that is uh, managed by the FARA Secretariat as well. And this, the, actually, the second most active uh, group is Rails. And that is managed by Daddy MD. So in total, we have 50 subcommittees, but not all of them are active. The benefit that we've been able to um, gain from D group is that we've been able to communicate with our different stakeholders throughout the three years um, in between the general assemblies. An example of this is that if we have 
certain announcements to make or a different um, engagement to make with different stakeholders, we are able to use the group. Um, but we've also been able to um, organize ourselves better by having a weekly update. We had a very big challenge in terms of the quality of information or moderating the information exchange among our members. We've been able to solve that through our weekly updates that's currently being uh, managed by the Secretariat. The second um, benefit is that we managed to empower non-research stakeholders, uh, meaning the uh, extension workers, farmers organizations. So they are able and they're free to raise any questions or any topics they want to discuss. A um, few months ago and even last year, we had very active discussions on specific topics that were raised openly by our members. Um, somehow it died down this year. We are trying to assess how, why or what is the reason for this. The fourth benefit is that mentioned earlier, we use this as an advocacy and dissemination tool. So when we send out an email, an email uh, about our achievements or any new opportunities, it reaches out to diverse um, users. And what is um, very important note, to note is that a lot of donor organizations are actually members of our D group and they're just very quiet. But when we talk to them, they are very much aware of what's happening um, at the far level in terms of activities. Um, through the subcommittees, we have also been able to uh, have focused discussions and it has also helped us improve the management of our different platforms as mentioned rails, but there's also the NASA that we are also working on. Um, Paypart is is, is very much um, active in using the D-Group. The main challenges we face is, is uh, how to manage uh, our dynamic sub-communities and then also catalyze discussion. Um, we, we, as much as we want to encourage discussions from our members, we also want to maintain quality discussions. Uh, as much as we want to have several sub-communities, we, we want to make sure that they're actually being used. And our manpower at the Secretariat is very limited. The second challenge in terms of management is the diverse skills and interests of members. Uh, when we had this very active discussions raised by some farmers or extension workers, we actually were also flooded with complaints from different members about receiving a lot of garbage from our D group. And I think uh, that still continues to be a problem, although it's been less and less now. Um, the other challenge is how we actually encourage the members to update their profile and also make better use of our uh, of this database of our members, I mean, encouraging them to have probably subgroups or um, of the use of the group. We we are still very much limited in, in exploring this um, new feature in the D group. The third challenge is um, well, it's linked because. Currently, FARA is trying to um, rationalize the different tools that we have at the moment. And there are internal questions of why we maintain the group when you can have Facebook, Twitter, but I guess those are the people who have not understood the, the, the difference between the group and Facebook. But I think there's also, uh, we need to also determine if we have a more effective uh, online network if we use link, LinkedIn or me. Now, in terms of, of the members, the challenge we face is understanding the purpose of the D group. Some would complain, oh, I'm not receiving enough information. Some would say, I have a lot of garbage in my mail, etc. So they, we still need to, to improve their understanding of what is the D group and what is the purpose, why they are members. 
So they have to know how to manage their own accounts. But also at the same time, how do they actually follow threads of discussion so that we can easily um, analyze the different discussion and different topics. Um, that's another that's, that's the challenge we face. So in conclusion, we have clearly the group has, a, has given us big benefits in terms of reaching out to our stakeholders across Africa. Um, we've been able to, uh, we need to strengthen its use within our um, communication strategy that is we're trying to revise, as well as um, link it up with our social media strategy that we are trying to develop at the moment. Um, the third one that we would like to do is to rationalize the sub-communities. There are um, very active sub-communities, but there are also sub-communities that are actually not needed anymore. Uh, and then we also have two groups that we need to harmonize or rationalize in terms of members list. That is the um, our group within the CTA and also our group as a foreign network. Um, at the moment, we want to be able to assess how effective the D-group is um, for FARA as a forum. I think that's a, a task that we need to do next year, um, which will probably feed into us having a comprehensive strategy and plan on how to manage the FARA D-group. Do we actually have a dedicated staff to manage D-groups, or do we have a more decentralized um, um, management? So the key questions we have um, for the group, for discussion, is how do we monitor and evaluate our D, our D groups? How do we actually also analyze the members' database? Encourage them how to, uh, to, be, to update their profile? And also use or export the list of members to other programs. Um, we had a challenge because we had very active subgroups sub-community, um, an example of that is PayPart and uh, FARA Network. If some, uh, do we actually maintain, um, how do you say that, a hierarchical flow of information from a community to sub-community to sub-sub-community? And is there an automatic membership within these three levels? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Myra. Thanks a lot, and thanks also, Sean, for presentation before. Um, the presentation are, I mean, different, some, some commonalities in terms of, for example, using D groups for managing conversation and time-bound discussions, but in fact, uh, the examples are, are quite different and also having from, coming from different uh, parts of the world, I think, uh, makes the conversation uh, more, more interesting and, and richer. Um, you mentioned Daddy and Francois. I don't know if uh, uh, you want to add something to Myra's presentation, or maybe you can integrate uh, uh, or, or give your specific experience while, while having the conversation, the discussion now. Uh, <coughs> uh, I, I mean, some people are still struggling to come in, the, but pro so probably somebody else will join us for the next uh, bit. We've got about 40 minutes for. Uh, um, for conversation. We have already some questions that uh, Sean and Farah uh, pose, uh, Sean and Myra, sorry, pose to, to the group, some specific question, uh, but there are also some coming from uh, uh, the chat. Christine, can you, can, you, um, can you tell us what questions are coming from the chat? Yes, we've got uh, questions here. Asking uh, from Rob, what is the task division between blog, Twitter, and the D group? So that's for uh, for Sean. That's for Sean. Then yeah. Neil and Giacomo had a question about what was Myra referring to as garbage. I mean, did you mean unmoderated mm -hmm. group? And then there was one more question from Rob to Myra, asking how much time does it take to facilitate a group or a theme? Okay, Actually, so there's can one we, more for, yeah. there's one fourth one from Giacomo to Myra about language issues. Okay, so can we start uh, maybe with Sean and the question about uh, uh, Twitter blog? What's what's the integration? What's the percentage? What how do you manage the different the different platforms? Sean. Sure. Um, great. Thank you. The D groups definitely takes the highest priority, but 
Um, Twitter, I've, I've been not particularly convinced about until more more recently because it's it's useful for reporting at events. Like um, I was recently at the Water and Health Conference in the US, and it's it's a good way of um, interacting with people at events like that and the Stockholm Water Week. Um, in terms of the blog, that's about trying to encourage third-party authors to, to write short opinion pieces. So again, there's a bit of pushing there, but not a huge amount of effort. Um, so both of those tools are trying to raise awareness and to drive traffic to eventually to, to the D groups, but it's the D groups where, where most of the effort goes in terms of the uh, moderation and the discussions to make sure that the, the quality of the discussions is, is good. Um, and that we, there's a tangible synthesis product at the end. So you can, you, I mean, basically Twitter and LinkedIn main, mainly are, are tools to, for, for outreach and to get people interested. And then you right. basically you get their names and their email addresses when they opt in uh, onto the D group. And that's quite, in, quite, quite interesting. Uh, there was an article recently about uh, uh, n how not to sell, to give away your your followers to, for example, things like Facebook, where you don't have you don't have basically a database of email addresses, while you are managing to do that uh, uh, through through D groups. Um, I see um, there are some other questions. There was a specific ones for me. I mean, Myra, your comment about people receiving garbage generated quite some replies. So can you elaborate a bit more on that? Uh, what do you mean with garbage? Is it th because the communities are non-moderated, so also uh, thank you messages or personal messages go through and reach the whole list? Is that what you're referring about? Can you elaborate a bit more? Yeah, sorry about that. Um, because of the diversity of our members, um, we had a lot of internal struggle on how to manage or moderate the discussions. Um, some people thought that it is better to keep it open and free and just let it flow and, and said that if we control or moderate it too much, then people will not be encouraged to, um, to raise issues or to discuss. Um, the other side is that if we, do, if we moderate it, then we actually ensure that there's a quality, quality control. Um, in the end, we, we decided to moderate it and, and be more strict, and it really died down. I, I think what, it is one of the reasons why the discussions have died down. There are no more um, open discussions that are coming out from our um, network. That's probably the effect of that. <coughs> Thank, thanks, Margaret. I, I think, yes, indeed, there is a trade-off, right, between having the community moderated and uh, uh, the participation that you can, uh, that you can generate, the level of participation. Uh, there was another question for, uh, uh, for you, well, two other questions, in fact. Uh, one from Rob, uh, and uh, was, uh, I mean, if you can elaborate a bit more in terms of how much time and resources are um, are necessary for, for the moderation for the work, uh, the way you're managing the D group. And then there was another question about uh, uh, language issue from Giacomo, but I'm not sure. I mean, it's just the question is to say just language issue, so maybe then Giacomo can elaborate a bit. But Mario, if you can uh, touch on this uh, issue of resources, how much time does the facilitation of a group uh, or a theme take? Okay. Um the moderation of a group. It depends if it's, if it's an open discussion of, of what we, when we tested it, it just dies down by itself. But then if we have a focused discussion, the organizers of the event actually determines the time frame. But usually what we observe, you get quality discussion if, it, if, if we don't make it too long. Two weeks is already I think the average, the ideal or the standard length of time that you could have for discussion. Beyond that, people actually lose interest. Um, I think I, well, in terms of, of the D group, how we managed it at the FARA Secretariat, earlier we had um, Eric 
who works on communications and public awareness, and especially it's moderating the whole um, D group of FARA, meaning the core D group of FARA, the FARA network. Um, he left us now, so um, we are now looking on who will take over that responsibility. Uh, we need somebody who has the expertise of the D group. It also takes time for them to understand not just the tool, but also the sensitivity of the members of our D group. So it's not just managing a D group, it's not just knowing the tool, but also understanding, understanding the sensitivities and also the interests of the different members of, of our uh, virtual network. Thanks very much. Uh, Giacomo, you had a question for Mike about language. Please. And you have also uh, your hand raised, so please, go ahead. Yeah. Um, um, well, I, I saw the, uh, the, the Sorry, distribution. Excuse me. Sorry, Giacomo, can you, please, can you please introduce yourself? I'm Giacomo Rambaldi. Giacomo Rambaldi. I, I work for CTA, um, and I am a member of the uh, board of the Groups Foundation. Um, I, uh, your membership is certainly uh, spread over Africa, and I assume that you have uh, both French-speaking and English-speaking people on the same group. I was wondering how you deal with that. Thanks, Giacomo. Mayra? Yeah, um, the language issue. Um, we always had this challenge with our French group. What we did, um, Francois can also highlight on this, is that we get volunteers to to um, translate the, the English to French and French to to English. But it continues to be our, our problem, really. Um, the anglophones are of course more um, active, but um, the past few weeks or months, Daddy, no? I think the, the francophones are also understanding understanding the concept, and they also are now becoming more active. I think it's a matter of um, um, breaking the ice of actually being active uh, and comfortable with sending a different language from the usual English that you read from our D group. But yes, it is a challenge. Can, Jack, can you I want to comment? Yes. Please. Well, I have an experience with a, with a, with a big group. Uh, um, uh, uh, I started this group uh, nine years ago, and now it has uh, more or less uh, uh, 3,000 people across four languages. Now, what I did at a certain point, based on requests from members, I created different chapters. So there is one chapter which is global and which is English speaking, but there are also other people who are not native English speakers and understand English. And then uh, there is a chapter uh, in Spanish, and which covers mainly people who reside in Latin America. Then there is a Portuguese speaking chapter, a Lusophone chapter, which covers people in Brazil. And then uh, once these chapters were there, then the French speaking people stood up and said, hey, if you make a chapter in Spanish and one in Portuguese, why not making a chapter in, in French? And so I created all these uh, groups. Uh, uh, there is no translation, and the, the discussion are, are separate. Um, but everybody has the chance to join the, the, the main English speaking group. So the uh, but the topic is the same it's uh, so these are all people having uh, similar interests and uh, and this is the way i i have been dealing with that thanks jack so probably here is a different challenge i would make sure that there is cross pollination between discussions happening happening similarly but they are separate so maybe that's that's another uh, discussion point for later. Um, I see that uh, Daddy also has, uh, uh, is hand raised. Daddy, you want to come in? And then we have a few more questions from the chat. Please, uh, Giacomo, please hand raise your hand mm -hmm. so we clean, we clean the queue. Thanks, Daddy. Please. OK. Thank you. Um, just wanted to add uh, some few points on the um, language issue. It has been really a challenge because um, when discussion starts, most of the time it is in English, and we see our francophone colleague complaining. And so um, I've been 
from time to time translating uh, some key messages and uh, sending uh, the French version of the the message. And of course, this can this is not sustainable because uh, we cannot be translating all the messages all the time. And so, uh, what is happening is that most of the discussions are uh, in, in 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 English and. Uh, we just encourage our uh, colleagues. Uh, we did not think of uh, separating them by uh, language groups, uh, but we just try, try to encourage them to, uh, the Francophone particularly, to speak uh, into French, uh, to contribute, to bring their contribution in, into French, and uh, uh, yeah, just make it uh, in, into French. And we also uh, encourage them to use uh, Google Translate. Uh, sometimes it can be helpful. It is not perfect, but uh, if uh, they use it, uh, we believe that it uh, would help them uh, a little. So uh, these are some few elements I wanted to add on the language issue. Thanks. Thanks very much, Daddy. And yes, that is a colleague of Myra and Francoise uh, at FARA. Uh, and uh, as Myra said, you are the main initiator oh, of, the of the Rails uh, uh, group on the D groups. Um, We've got a question from Neil to, to Sean. Uh, Sean, you mentioned the difficulty to engage practitioner. Do you have thoughts on why and how to address this? Is it to do with lack of awareness or lack of connectivity? Would you like to reply to this, uh, Sean? Yeah, sure. Um, actually, that is kind of, uh, I don't know how to explain it quite well. We do have very good links to practitioners. We're just being greedy and want more. Um, one of the great things about the e-discussion on cost-effective boreholes was that we had uh, drillers in Ni Nigeria and Nigerians in Zimbabwe and Zambia and Somalia and all over the place really uh, sharing experiences on, on nitty-gritty details about uh, drilling contracts and things like that. So really fine detailed stuff which is, which is great to capture. But uh, I think it's, it's just our ambition, our vision for the network is to, ideally we'd like to get every district water officer in the world signed up to, to our network because um, because of the, of the value we think that it can provide them in terms of technical support and dissemination and things like that. So our challenge is, is, is how do we do that and we're, as part of our strategy we're mapping out how we can build up better relationships with, with uh, rural water uh, government departments generally, and, and and from there work down to a, a local government level. So it, it's part of a a wider uh, wider challenge that we've set for ourselves. Uh, thanks very much, Sean. Uh, uh, while, while we're talking, there is also an interesting conversation going between Julien and Oke um, about increasing membership and strategy to increasing membership. And and Julien had just uh, left a comment to to this. Uh, Julien, would you like to come in and uh, and tell us tell us your comment? Julien Kuster. Yes, hello. Can hello. Thanks. Can you please introduce yourself? Thank you. Yes. So I'm Julien Kuster. I'm working with you and I facilitate the super CTV. Uh, it's on the group. It's about 1,500 members and it started uh, three years ago. Called Wild and, and uh, it's both a uh, in many English, in a bit of French, and very little uh, Spanish. As a result of the, the discussion in, um, in the language. Now, what, the point I just raised was uh, on the ability uh, to address and to get the high level decision makers on board. Because it's uh, one of the challenges we have is we have quite a lot of discussions about two, two or three mails. Per day, which is, uh, which is 500 emails per year, about. And uh, already a lot of people find that, that there's a lot of traffic and want to unsubscribe, so we have to, to, to fight sometimes to, get, to put them in the list. But it's really difficult to get high level decision makers. And this is one of the challenges. I don't think, I, I don't think there's any solution to it. But this is a uh, real. So not only to have them, not only to have them on the list, but also making sure that they are engaged and active. 
Uh, yeah, like, I think they write that they read the messages and that they contribute because, yeah, to make them come really part of the of the network and the act, active members of the network. This is one yeah. of the challenge to reach the the to reach all the people at the different level of the organization. Because I think one of the strengths of networking is to bring all the people together from different institutions but also at the different levels of the institution, from really grassroots and people uh, working on the field project, but also farmers on the field, etc. And this is one of the strengths of DBIS that so easy to use that we can reach everyone, but then it's to get the high level people involved. And we stop yeah. most of the time at the middle management, senior management yeah, and director. That's clear. Let's, uh, there are a couple of other questions from our presenters, but I would like to, uh, to, to hear from the other participants. This is, I think, a very relevant uh, uh, comment. So it's one thing is to engage participants. The other thing is to make sure that decision makers are also part of the conversation and they are actively uh, contributing and engaging. So is there uh, any, any, any other of the participants has any comments over this or any suggestion before we move on to other questions that are pending from the chat? Uh, yes, that it, please. Yeah, um, on the question, I think there was a question on the how to include the level of your interaction or involvement with partners. I think uh, one thing I've observed uh, from my experience is that uh, so far the D group, um, uh, let's say the messages being sent to the D group, uh, most of the time are being accessed by members through their, uh, let's say, um, Microsoft Outlook, uh, their messaging uh, software. A few, very few of them know uh, or, or that they can also access the Google platform itself online uh, using their uh, username and password and have more uh, facilities, more features uh, there. So uh, capacity building in use of the platform I think is something that uh, we may also consider in terms of increasing the level of interactions because not so many people do go actually on the platform online. They do receive emails in their email box and respond to them, but uh, make very few the, the, the online platform. So awareness creation and capacity building on the use of the platform will increase uh, uh, involvement and membership also, I think. Thanks. Thank you, Daddy. That's very that's very useful comment. And in fact, also the fact that through the web interface, you can change your email preferences. So for example, to get one daily digest, uh, uh, or weekly di digest of the messages. Uh, a lot of users are not aware of this, and then indeed they they complain about the receiving too many messages. So uh, I see it also in the uh, in the work uh, I've been doing with users of DigiGroups that there is uh, indeed a need of making sure that everybody knows what are the functionalities that they can use to make their experience, their user experience better. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there is also one, uh, uh, also Sean has raised his hand. Sean, do you want to comment to come in on this point? Yeah, sure. I think to get decision makers engaged in dgroups, it has to be on a topic that either they're personally very interested in. Like, for example, um, on the drilling discussion, we had the state minister from Ethiopia um, uh, get involved. So that's something he's quite passionate about. Or it has to be a very targeted question. Um, that they see see some value in participating um, in the discussion with, and one of the things that we've given uh, space to the um, sanitation water for all are uh, trialling D groups, and hopefully they'll they'll become a, a full member, um, and they they go for more high level decision makers in their in their alliance, and they they're seeing how they can use D groups to get these these high level decision makers to interact on on po on policy decisions as a sort of in between discussions uh, discussions that occur in between their high level meetings so if it if it adds value to those discussions then I think it will be used if it's just seen as um, another stream of of, of emails then it will probably be ignored 
Yeah, that's uh, that's very important. Thanks very much, Sean. And uh, we look forward to uh, to this organization to become the group member, the group member, and then to join their next peer exchange when they will tell us how to engage with with eleven policymakers. Uh, Kristen, can you help me track if we have any other pending questions uh, on the chat? Uh, I think there were a couple from uh, Neil and Giacomo probably that were not. Uh, it's not been addressed yet, but I welcome also other participants to raise their hand uh, and, and um, uh, ask questions to our speakers if, if you have uh, anything that you would like clarity on, or uh, come in with the suggestions for the question they had for you. Um, Sean uh, uh, was asking how to facilitate uh, uh, exchange across different languages. Myra had uh, other other questions on the monitoring and evaluation of D-Group, how to assess when a D-Group is successful, how do you uh, uh, make sure that you can demonstrate a concrete and tangible output, uh, and then uh, some that we've touched upon already, the management of the different committee and how much time that uh, uh, takes. Um, Christine, is there any questions that are pending from the chat? Hello, everyone. This is Christine Colson from FAO again. Uh, Neil had asked Myra about why she thought dgroups had an advantage compared to other tools such as Ning, LinkedIn, etc. Was that answered? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that has been answered, but it's, I think it's uh, very important to, to hear from fire experience, indeed, what's the advantage of dgroup compared to other uh, tools that are maybe freely available or anyways accessible to participants. Myra? Yeah. Um, okay, so actually I can't answer that yet because we are still at the pro in the process of um, assessing the advantages of Ning versus the group. I from from initial analysis before the D group was revised or update, upgraded, uh, Ning had an advantage because you can actually see the profile of your members. But now, the D -group, I can see that the group members have actually well-defined profile in terms of experiences, the biography, and interests. That's also a very nice um, feature of D group that we need to explore more. Um, besides that, I, I cannot really be an authority on assessing between D group and me yet. Um, maybe by early next year, we should be able to share our assessment on this. Um, comparison. I guess so, Ning so, is more popular. I don't know. So this is a, a, a study that is uh, currently taking place at FARA. You're looking more more closely at these issues at the moment. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much, Myra. Um, there was also another question from OK, which I'm not sure uh, if it was from probably for both of. Uh, for both of the presenters, how can you make sure uh, I can increase the level of interaction? We have touched slightly upon that, but maybe there is some more to elaborate. Uh, and then uh, um, also uh, from OK, what uh, if something has been done to show and to uh, make members understood what the difference between e groups and and other uh, social media? which uh, in fact relates also to some of the comments that from Martin and Daddy when they say that in fact with the new platform there are quite some new features that need to be explained to most of users. Uh, but to both of you, what has been done to increase uh, um, interaction and, and membership? Have you tried something specifically? Sean and then Myra. Um, right. Uh, I think uh, as I think I've already explained, the interaction has been pretty much driven by organised discussions and then just some ad hoc things, but generally not that much outside what's been uh, organised other than um, a few technical queries that have come in. Um, and we've, we've been in the process of migrating our membership over to D-Group, so what will be interesting to see over, over the next uh, over the year is how how the network how our network on D groups develops further in terms of uh, we've been experiencing a, a steady increase in membership um, and what what do we need to do to maintain that level of growth or will it just will it plateau? Um, 
Yeah. Thanks very much, Sean. Thanks. Uh, Neil just posted a comment and to, to open a bit more discussion also to the other participants. Um, to hear something from you about the level, depth, and quality of the discussion on D-Groups versus other platforms. Uh, so do we have, is there anybody in the room that have experience have compared the different, uh, different platforms and uh, can tell about the different level of interaction that you can get through the different platforms? Anybody would like to share? I mean, I'm, I see... Uh, yeah, Neil is just saying that emails promote discussion deeper on the website. That's, uh, that's probably true, but it depends a lot yeah, on the topic you're discussing, I guess, and, uh, and the purpose of the discussion. Um, I see one hand raised. Myra, yes, please. Yeah, I'm, I'm a member of the CC group, and I think they're in the NIN group, isn't it? Or maybe they a connection member in um, I'm also a member of the Africa Business Forum. Um, I don't see much difference, but it seems like they also have this, um, how do you say that? The members are a little bit more disciplined in terms of responding to the threads of discussion. You can really clearly see when you go into a um, the, 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 the group, you can follow the thread. But with the D group, um, the threads of discussions are a little bit not organized and presented through the email properly. Or maybe I haven't explored that possibility yet. Yes. Sometimes when the email, when the, when the um, subject line changes so slightly, it creates a new thread. So yes, I experience that as well. Sometimes conversations that belong to the same thread are in the thread split. So that's probably something to uh, to work on to make sure that that doesn't happen. But on the other hand, it's also about uh, coaching users uh, uh, the way uh, the way to reply to messages. So it goes back to the point that that uh, raised before of capacity building and making sure that users know exactly what they can do and how they can use the platform at its, at its best. Um, Rob, you have a comment, please? Yeah, I also think that one of the key features of, of this email type of uh, exchange is that it is not at the same time. So it gives people the chance to just let it lie down for one day or maybe even longer and then really take time to reflect and sit down and then write a response. So that is basically the, the main advantage for, for the in-depth uh, character, I would say. Thanks very much, Rob. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, the, other, the other participants in the room, I mean, we haven't heard from uh, uh, from many of you yet. Uh, w would you like to, to comment and to share your experience? I mean, I know that most of you are familiar with D-Groups or, or other platforms. Uh, um, I see Adrian from, from Eldis Communities in. Um, I see, I see is, is Sophie still around? No, Sophie from FAO. Uh, she's also busy with the Camp for Dev uh, uh, French version of the list. So there are, again, the issue of multi-language there. Um, any, anything that you would like to share to the group from your experience on these issues of increasing membership, increasing interaction, uh, language and moderation, uh, different approaches that you have tried, used, and worked well? No volunteer? Yes, please, Neil. Go ahead. Thank you, Chris. Uh, one, of, one of the uh, challenges that we have with HIFA 2015. Um, can you hear me okay? Uh, yes, loud and clear. Yeah, good. good. One of the challenges that we have is uh, the, with capacity is the is how to identify and then how to train a moderator in um, sound in good moderation techniques. I mean, we found that some people make you know, naturally, are um, adapt to moderation more easily than others, and 
also we I mean, we use a particular um, range of techniques that we have for training and I'm just wondering from the presenters that we had today what what they how how they do it with regards to selection and um, training of moderators. Thanks very much, Neil. Thanks for this comment. Uh, Debbie, you have your raise and raise, please. Yes, uh, thank you. Um, in our case, uh, what we have done is that uh, we have uh, facilitated the creation of a national D group in our member countries. So we have a continental D group that is uh, gathering all for our stakeholders. And at the sub-regional level, uh, Cora, Fasareka, Sadek, uh, we've also facilitated the creation of a uh, uh, sub-regional D group. And then we moved down further at the country level where uh, we also have a national D group that is gathering people from uh, one country. So um, through our rails network, uh, we appoint uh, some facility or moderator administrators of the National D group who are actually people uh, are disseminating information, facilitating discussions and so on and so forth. So here we have an already established network of people that if we empower them, if we train them on this, I think the D group has uh, improved a lot in these past few, uh, few, few, few years and there are quite a number of interesting features that have been put in place. And if through th these people we have, these networks we have at uh, uh, sub-regional, national level, we can organize kind of training, capacity building, so that they know the real potential of the D groups, uh, it could uh, bring, it could increase in, in terms of uh, usage, usage of um, uh, the platform. Thank you. Thanks very much, Ladi. And I think, yeah, that's, uh, that's very true for users, but also for, for administrator and moderator, that there is probably also something, uh, some work to do there in terms of capacity building of admin and moderators. Um, <coughs> we've got a couple of other people uh, raising their hands. Daddy, please uh, unraise your hand if you haven't done it yet. Uh, yeah. We've got first uh, Martin Boers, who is hiding under the company moderator uh, name. Uh, so we'll have, uh, we'll have first Martin, and then Christine, and then Trisha in this order. Please, Martin. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Sorry for this uh, ghost name, but that's the way to, to handle these type of meetings. Well, about the training, and I must say, well, there are two people here on the list who uh, have been uh, very much involved in training lots of people within ECO, uh, Chris and, and, and Pierre, of course, also in the use of uh, D groups and in moderation skills. What I see is that most times people are very enthusiastic and, and, and willing to learn and, and take over uh, tips and tricks, but it, it, it vanishes quite soon in the time because they are not really using all these things uh, in, in their daily work which is too much absorbing, at least within that organization, but I guess it's in all our organizations. Uh, also with facilitation, we, we have done some online trainings, specifically online to be able to also, uh, well, try to show what, what you can do and w which mistakes you can make. And they're the same, um, uh, the same happened. The, the, yeah, people wanted and were interested, but lose their interest for other reasons. And that's my my question all the time: how how to over, overcome it? It's only those people who are really well have have a, a um, are passionate about the online working, who will take it over? But those are very few, in in my experience. Thanks, Martin. Rob just commented, in fact, uh, that yeah, eco staff is only 10% of 
the, uh, of facilitation in their, uh, in their work, uh, uh, in their TORs. Uh, so uh, the question is how do you make sure that, that people become good moderator and facilitator in D-groups uh, when uh, 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 facilitating is not in their, in their task description. Uh, and uh, put it uh, other ways, it's how to make sure people use tools efficiently in uh, embedded into their work and not on top on top of. Um, I think this is a common uh, situation in in different organizations, in many organizations. Um, we've got uh, we've got Kristin afterwards. Kristin, please. Hello again. This is Kristin. Just to follow on um, the comments from Martin, if it is important that people acknowledge that it's not just about finding a tool that's simple, but also having the time to moderate. And that's one of the things where we find dgroups is now becoming a tool which is fast and simple to use so that people can actually focus on the technical content of the discussion that they want to have. And we found that the best way to identify moderators is usually people who are participating in discussions, good at listening, and our best ambassadors are often people like Julienne, who are lead groups that are growing, they're dealing well with the growth, they, people come to them and say, we like what you're doing, how do you do it, tell us more. So there's no easy way to do it, but um, building on the people that we have already is really important. So if I, can, if, if I can sum up, it's finding your champions and make sure that your champions tell the story to the other, tell the good story to the other in the organization. Uh, so probably there's something to do in terms of sharing experiences in within organization as much as we're trying to do now with this, uh, with this session where we bring in experience from several organizations. Uh, thanks very much, Christian. Uh, Christian, please, can you please introduce yes, yourself? Uh, yes, uh, Christian Binick. I used to be active in the Southern African region, both on the SADC network but also on the FARO network. But um, about six months ago, I've now moved to the CTA, so I'm actually together with uh, Giacomo here in the Netherlands. I just wanted to share some information about, well, some experiences on, on D groups in terms of how it can also be used as an online collaboration tool. Um, I think the advantage people have talked about is that it's something you can work with using email, and especially for our partners who are still in low connectivity areas who don't have access full time to the internet, um, they, they rely, still rely a lot on, 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 on email. Um, and I've had, you know, uh, you know, people who are still new to the concept of working online or working through the computers other than email. I think dgroups is, is one step further. It's not as advanced or people might, might say it's, it's uh, not as, yeah, it's not as advanced. People might say it's primitive, but it's not as advanced as the new social web. But the fact that it, it, it's, some, it's a technology that people see as being halfway between what they used to do traditionally, meeting face to face, and to something that they can understand and they feel related to that concept of talking to someone else or one at a time, talking to the group. Uh, to, and, and I think that will be, that is, a, that is part of the transition for some of our stakeholders to, to evolve and actually move to the more advanced uh, you know, social media. Um, I've had examples of uh, people, for example, in Seychelles, which is a tiny country, uh, about 18 people having to meet to come up with a with a common a national document, realizing that they cannot, even though they're in a small place, they don't have the time to meet physically. Every they decided that the group was good enough to be able to share information among themselves. They were working on jointly on drafting, uh, you know, chapters of a document. Uh, there was a mixture of using D groups to to share the information to, to, to so that everyone is exposed to the contributions of the whole group, but they still had someone who was doing the compilation of the different versions and the comments, and every week they would up, uh, come up with a revised version of the draft document, and they finally you know made progress. And, and I thought that was quite interesting where we're using simple technology, quite accessible to us to, to, to make progress. Um, I had a comment on the role of the facilitators. I thought, uh, again, we don't have a, a kind of threaded version in the in D groups, but perhaps one of the roles of the facilitators is, is basically to, on a regular basis, tidy up the conversation, try to 
do the synthesis or, 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 or yeah, basically make, make a synthesis of the, the past few conversations and come up with a, a, a longer version that people can digest and then keep on reflecting on it. I think that has been uh, a role I've tried to play in, in, in some of the groups I've, I've led. Uh, at the same time, you, you, you use that as a way of mentoring other people in terms of how they, sh how they could um, well, behave or how, what kind of actions they can, they can do or they can take on the group. So this was just my, my uh, two. Thanks very much, Krish. Thanks very much. Uh, in the meantime, uh, there have been a few more contributions to the chat. Ape, which just said to, to leave, said that, uh, well, at EVOS, they're using quite a different strategy in terms that hardly any group is moderated. So it would have been nice to, to ask how that uh, plays out. Uh, uh, we'll follow up with, with Ape after this meeting to see uh, what are the strategies that uh, they're using. Um, there was a conversation between uh, also Neil, Julien, and Francois. I don't know if you had that bilateral conversation or if there's something that you would like to bring uh, through the group. Uh, I will start with, uh, uh, with Francois and then uh, Julien. You know, you have uh, the iMark module uh, developed by the FAO, and I think some of us are familiar with it. Now, the disadvantage with uh, getting an IMARC training is that you are spending an average of 15 hours getting trained yourself. But uh, I remember ha having done it myself, uh, just asking if I send me a, a CD-ROM. Uh, I got it in my post box at home, and I went through that training, and it was very beneficial because it is very detailed. Uh, you get uh, hands-on on how to facilitate online discussions the do's and the don'ts, and uh, it should be much more uh, mainstream, and maybe we should, we should have training sessions on how to moderate online discussions, because I, my experience is that people find it difficult to go through either online or CD-ROM training. But that specific module developed uh, by iMark FAO uh, is not only for agricultural uh, actors, but it, 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 it's, well, it's really well done, and it's also linked to a number of PDF documents which you can download and giving you detailed information on how you should go about an online discussion. And it is true, we are all uh, so much uh, harassed by time constraints that we, we, we tend to forget the basic rules of online discussion. Um, so even revisiting uh, those training modules is always useful. But the time is, is a bit constrained, so we tend to just um, uh, leave, leave that experience apart and just uh, try to do it in a very intuitive way. And it's a pity because we are missing key lessons which have been very well trained in the past. Thanks, Francois. Very, thanks very much. Yeah, that's important. There is, uh, it's quite good indeed, uh, the iMark, uh, and uh, as Neil just suggested, by uh, email, uh, sorry, by, by the chat, probably one idea could be that the, the B groups take forward. One idea could be to have uh, uh, to slightly adapt or to start for the IMAR to do a bit more of uh, something specific in terms of using D groups for online e discussion. And then if that is a, a, is a probably a not that intense product that requires less time to self train, but still it's useful and beneficial to, uh, to the people that uh, go through the module. Um, I would like, sorry, also, um, Martin says that also other idea has very good, com a very good training material, so that's another good resource to check for online facilitation. Um, Julian, you had some comments or, or questions, and then we move to, to Neil. Yes, okay, I can uh, make one comment. I, I was saying that, and you, you mentioned it, that it's, uh, we really have to consider that moderating the list or network it has to be part of the job. And most of the time when I talk to my colleagues, I say, well, when I consider how much time I spend moderating the D-group, I say it's either 0% or 100%. And I would say it's more 100% in fact. Even if I don't spend so much time, a lot of what I do is linked with the with the list and how it can interact with the list. When I before, when I was to do a, a note to my boss, I was just doing a, a note to my boss. Now, 
a lot of the things I would pull, I would have done only for my boss before, I reshape it and I send it to the whole list. So there's a lot of messages I sent like this and my, my supervisor is on the list. And so he gets information, but I reach a wider uh, audience. So a lot of things have to be reshaped according to the, to the networking activities. And I think that moderating a list, if it's on top of it, then it will be always uh, it will not be a priority. So it has to be embedded. And I think on the, on the a network of uh, big groups, uh, administrators, we have to advocate for this in the different institutions. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think that goes uh, uh, with, with a lot of online tools. Uh, may embed it into your daily practice so it doesn't become an add-on, but it's just the way you do you, you, you do your daily tasks. So uh, I'm sure that we'll get back in touch with you, Julien, to, to get a better understanding of how, of how you uh, have been successful in, in doing that, and we can share that back to the rest, uh, to the rest of the group. I don't think I'm successful, but at least I, I try to do it. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. Thanks, uh, Neil. You had uh, you had uh, one uh, another comment, Neil. In the meantime, yes. Myra yes. suggesting to to yes. link uh, to link more with the uh, iMark uh, and see uh, how yes. the training could be developed. Well, I think so. Okay. I mean, um, one of the I mean, Degroot has, of course, lots of strengths, um, but we also have relatively limited capacity in terms of our human resources and our financial resources. And I'm quite excited about this idea about iMark and the fact that iMark have already done a training module in online facilitation. Now iMark, as I understand it, is also a partnership of several uh, development organizations that are committed to training. So, and also one of those organizations and possibly more are both partners of IMARC and are partners of C groups. So the, um, the, 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 the question arises, can we partner, could we partner, with, could D groups partner with IMARC in such a way that we produce a, an adapted version of their online facilitation uh, training module uh, but specifically uh, based on the dgroups platform. Um, it just seems that it would be a lot easier for us to do that in collaboration with iMark than it would be for dgroups foundation uh, and its uh, five board members to try to put together uh, such a module on our own. Sure. And I think that's, that's very useful. Thanks, Neil. And I think that's something uh, that uh, probably the board can, can look into and work on. In the coming in the coming weeks, um, we are eight minutes beyond uh, the schedule and time. Uh, so I and it's it's getting late. So uh, I would like just to see if there is any final burning question or issues that uh, you would like to any of you would like to to raise before uh, before we close the meeting. Please, if you have any final comment or question, do raise your hand uh, using the emoticon so we can we can see if there is. Anything else that's worth, worth addressing now? Okay, I don't see any any end raise, so um, I'm going to close the meeting. Just thanking you. Sorry. Okay, uh, I hear some background noise. Um, so we're saying I just thank you all for for the participation and for the conversation. I think. It has been really interesting and useful, and quite some uh, some different points have have emerged. Um, so what we will do after this, uh, we will produce a short report uh, of the session, uh, and I promise it's going to not be longer than 500 words. Uh, so we won't keep you too busy reading reading the report, but there will be there will be a short uh, a short output from this meeting. The presentation will be made available. So uh, Steve. You'll receive the link, and as Neil said before, uh, we as we as as D group, uh, even if I'm just I mean, I'm not part of the board, but I'm supporting the board. Uh, we hope this is the first of a series of meetings in different users to discuss use of D groups and in general online uh, uh, moderation and uh, online communities. How to moderate, manage, uh, and engage in online communities. Uh, 
again, thanks very much for this interesting meeting. Um, we'll be in touch and we hope to see you again soon.